Namaste. Welcome to Youth TV Show. In today's episode, we are featuring Mrs. Diana Fred, a founder of Acupuncture Without Borders, AWP. Here, we will show you what she has to say about acupunctures as she talks about acupuncture therapy and the history of acupuncture. I'm Diana Freed, founder of Acupuncture Without Borders. Acupuncture Without Borders works around the world doing trauma healing treatments in underserved communities in conflict, communities dealing with severe poverty, environmental devastation. Our focus is on trying to intervene in the cycles of trauma so that they don't get perpetuated from one generation to the next. So people who have been through disasters have experienced severe trauma. And we go into disaster settings as soon as we can after a disaster has occurred to provide these deeply healing acupuncture treatments. We bring acupuncture practitioners to settings around the world. An important part of our mission is that we train people so that they can do these practices themselves. So in places where we can train acupuncturists, we train them in this simple ear protocol that we use. It's called the NADA protocol. And it's a very deeply powerful treatment for healing trauma. We have treated hundreds of thousands of people in settings all over the world and have had incredible results, mind-boggling results at times. We were in New Orleans a year after we had provided 8,000 treatments after Hurricane Katrina. And we were wearing our Acupuncture Without Borders t-shirts and somebody walked up to us and picked up, literally picked up one of the people from our group, picked her off the ground and said, you guys saved my life and I'm forever grateful. Although even one treatment can be life-changing, it can be extremely powerful when people have experienced severe trauma. One of the things that we do is we train local practitioners around the world. So we train acupuncturists, we train other healthcare practitioners, and we train community organizers, community activists, representatives of non-governmental organizations so that they can provide healing treatments. We train people in use of needles if they're registered as acupuncturists or depending on what the situation is in the country. Sometimes we can train nurses and other healthcare practitioners also in this ear protocol. And we train other practitioners in using ear seeds on the same acupuncture points which is also a very, very powerful healing treatment. And in Nepal, we've been running a program since 2009. So we have been training, we've trained over 100 Nepali people, nurses, acupuncturists, healthcare practitioners, Red Cross, people from the Red Cross, other representatives of, N of NGOs. And we have trained them to be able to do these healing treatments. And we found out one of the groups that we trained that has been doing treatment since 2010. They have been doing health camps all over Nepal and have treated about 50,000 people during that time. They've also been doing really intensive work since the earthquakes in Nepal. So our treatments on the one hand before the earthquakes, we were working with organizations for children and women who have been trafficked, for peacemaking organizations, for women carpet factory workers, who work under really severely difficult conditions. And also all of the training that we had done was to prepare people in case of a disaster. And what happened is that the foundation that we built actually kicked into gear within three days after the first earthquake. And they were out every day for months now. They have been out, they have done about 20,000 treatments in displaced camps, in shelters, out in the communities that you have to walk to because they're remote and um, some of those communities were completely devastated. There isn't even a house standing. So they've been going out into all of these communities serving people and doing tremendously important work um, in the aftermath of the disaster here in Nepal. So what AWB is all about is actually about providing sustainable long-term tools 
so that people are in their own communities able to help their own communities. That's really the core of what we're about. So I started Acupuncture Without Borders in 2005 after Hurricane Katrina. So we've been doing this work for 10 years now. And where we would like to go is to have enough support, funding support, so that we can actually provide the services that are demanded of us. There's an incredible demand for what we're doing. We hear from people all over the world. We just got an email the other day from Nigeria asking, pleading with us to come and help the people who are dealing with um, deep, deep trauma from the crisis there. And so we get these kinds of requests all the time. There's an incredible need for this sort of work, both the treatments and also the empowerment that comes from training local people. In some ways, ultimately, that's the most important. So we could potentially be a very large organization providing dozens and dozens of trainings all over the world at any given time. And with the right funding support, we would be able to do that. What we want is to be a substantial organization and well-funded so that our very small staff doesn't have to work their knuckles to the bone and so that we can actually meet the demand that is asked of us from all over the world. We want to be able to provide these services and these trainings. At any given time, we could be providing dozens of trainings around the world with the right funding and support. It's not only incredibly cheap, incredibly easily portable, but it's highly effective. We can treat all kinds of conditions with a very simple protocol. So even though our focus is on trauma reduction and healing, we find after our treatments that people will say, oh my, this pain in my neck that I've had forever is just gone. So the number of things that we can treat with very simple treatment protocols is quite astounding. Our volunteers are now a truly global network of people. Even on this mission that we're on at the moment, we have people from Israel, from the United States, from Canada. We've had people from literally all over the world come and help volunteer in various efforts. And we have now trained Nepalese, Haitians, people in Israel who are also working in Palestinian villages. So we have volunteers that are truly a global network. There are people from other countries where the legal situation is different and we have trained other healthcare workers. For instance, in Haiti, many of the volunteers in Haiti are psychologists, they're nurses, they provide other kinds of healthcare modalities. So they're not necessarily just acupuncturists. Today, we're working in a leprosy colony on the outskirts of Kathmandu. These are people who have been completely marginalized and stigmatized by their families and their communities. They cannot return to their homes. They have actually been cured of leprosy, 100% cured. But because their families and communities still have concern about contagion, they are not able to return home. And we're here because it is yet another community that has been marginalized um, to the edges and for us to show up and offer a healing treatment and offer our love and compassion from our hearts. Today we treated about 50 people with the NADA protocol this auricular ear acupuncture treatment that helps to heal stress and trauma and also other kinds of pains and conditions that may be associated. Our program in Nepal is a perfect example of what Acupuncturist Without Borders does because we started in Nepal by just exploring what would be wanted by these communities. 
So we came in 2009 and began our program in Nepal and built a really strong foundation for having an ongoing program here. And then in 2015, when the earthquake hit, we found that our teams were able to mobilize immediately. They were out doing treatments three days after the earthquake. And by now they've provided 20,000 treatments to affected communities. The people who show up to do this work, truthfully, when you do this work, what you receive in return is often so much bigger than what you feel you have given out. Amika, I am a Center in Boston. I am a यहाँ चाहिँ नि अब एकदमै समस्या छ बिरामीहरुको लागि औषधि उपचारको लागि अब यहाँ चाहिँ नि अहिले चाहिँ नि यो हात जोड्ने दुख्ने अब टाउको दुख्नेहरुको लागि चाहिँ नि अब यहाँ अकुपन्चर भन्ने चाहिँ नि एउटा मनोवैज्ञानिक उपचारहरु गरिरहनु भएको छ यहाँ साथीहरु आएर त्यसले चाहिँ नि मानसिक रोग देखि लिएर तपाईको चाहिँ नि के रे हात जोड्ने दुख्ने टाउको दुख्ने हात खुट्टा दुख्ने जीव दुख्नेहरु चाहिँ नि त्यसलाई चाहिँ नि एकदमै राम्रो सुलभ हुन्छ त्यो चाहिँ नि अब महिनाको एकचोटी गर्नु पर्छ कुष्ठ रोग भन्ने कुरो चाहिँ नि अब जुलाई पनि लाग्न सक्छ तर हाम्रो चाहिँ नि शरीरको चाहिँ नि अवस्था चाहिँ नि कमजोर छ भने देखि त्यो व्यक्तिलाई लाग्न सक्छ त्यस कारणले गर्दा खेरि यो कुष्ठ रोग चाहिँ नि ठूलो रोग हैन With this, we have come to the end of today's show. Thank you for being with us. Namaste.